Marcy, Clancy, are you ready to die hard? Durr. <laughs> but die hard too. <laughs> yes. I was going to say, I'm ready to die harder. <laughs> yes, I was about to say the same thing. I'm ready to die hard. Or, or as it, it's as pronounced in Germany, D harder. <laughs> the hotter. Okay. okay. All right, let's do this. Let's, uh, do it. let's start C hard two in five, four, three, <laughs> two, one, go. And we are off, hopefully. Yes, we are. It's Speed's favorite 20th Century Fox, who is no longer called it, that. It, it's 20th Century Studios now, Marcy. <laughs> What is this like? Several films in a row? Well, not maybe not in a row, but at least recently we've yeah, had... well, like watching a lot of movies that are from 20th Century Fox lately. It's weird. Yeah, I don't know what's up with that. I have no idea. Indeed. I have not seen this one for a few years, so I'm very excited to rewatch it. D Hard Two. <laughs> I like it's how this gets right into it. It like, doesn't. Yeah, nothing. Boom. Just boom. Yeah. yeah. It's like, you think you're having a bad day? Well, at least you're not John McClane for the exactly. second year in a row. Hey, it's that guy who's in, like, a lot of movies. That's the cop. <laughs> <laughs> Whose name I can't even think of. I got a New York accent. What are you talking about? I believe he played Joey's dad on Friends. <laughs> I'm going to find out who he is. Because I, am... I, I am currently trying to figure that out myself. <laughs> Did we know what his name is? <laughs> I, I, the only thing I have here is like John Costello? I'm probably wrong. Could be Maybe. anyone. I don't know. Holy shit, Mark Boone Jr.'s in this? Really? We'll have to look out for it. There's a lot of people Jeez. in this movie. Shockley. Oh. <laughs> oh, wait, um. You know what? It might be. Is it Robert Costanzo? Is that who I'm thinking of? Who the cop is? I don't know. I think... I'm going to tell you. I will find out. And I love. Yep, that's him. Yep, Robert Costanzo. Also, what I love about uh, Die Hard 2, because you know there's always the debate like whether Die Hard, the first one, is a Christmas movie or not. They pretty much was like, you know what? Forget that debate. Die Hard 2 is a full-on Christmas movie. <laughs> they're, they're, if, if it's at a Christmas, it's a Christmas movie. Exactly. Like, yeah. you can watch Die... The thing about, like, at least Die Hard uh, 1 and 2, like, it doesn't matter. You can watch it whenever because it's always relevant. But it just feels extra Christmassy at Christmas. Exactly. And That's I'd... why I always watch Ghostbusters 2 during New Year's, because mm. that is a New Year's movie. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And I don't care all the hate Ghostbusters 2 gets. I love it. Shut up. Yes. Yeah. I will just tell people hey. to shut up. Oh, here we go. It's oh, he's oh, naked! Oh, Straight away, <laughs> naked. It's nude William Sadler. <laughs> I mean, I'm not complaining, because he's, you know, he looks all right here. I mean, he's, like, super fit here. Like, I reckon not an I could see a bit of a dangling ball there. Oh, there is a dangle. <laughs> <laughs> it was da we all it looked. A dangle, Terry. <laughs> we all looked. We were all looking. Well, of course. I mean, at least the first movie gave us boobs. This one just gives us bare ass and balls. Yeah. Exactly. Can't this complain. is probably one of those things, like, that wasn't in the script, and William Taylor's like, I want to be nude during this scene. <laughs> <laughs> Which would not surprise me at all. No, this is just him getting... This is just behind-the-scenes footage of him and his hotel getting ready to go on set for Die Hard. Yeah, I think it they was. It. Yeah. <laughs> this is so Jack there. Too. He is. I think... I, bleh. This... I know everyone talks about, like, Die Hard being a Christmas movie, but not enough people give love to Die Hard 2, so I'm glad that we are today. Hmm. Well, I guess... I'll... That's the backseat. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I really enjoyed Die Hard 2 as well, but I think a lot of people probably not as fussed on it as, I guess, the first one. Oh, Robert Patrick. Um, the <laughs> T-1000's always... infiltrating! Who I always forget is a henchman in this film, along with, like, Von D. Curtis Hall, John Leguizamo, yeah. and a whole bunch of other people. Um, I guess maybe it probably doesn't get as much attention as the first one, maybe because Die Hard 2... It's kind of similar to Home Alone 2, where it's just basically the exact same story again, but just in a different location. 
but it's still just as fun because I think Home Alone 2 is just as fun as Home Alone 1 and I think this is just as good like it is a lot of fun and this ties into one of my big phobias of airports I hate airports with a passion they Mm. freak me out my anxiety goes through the roof if I have to think about an airport so Mm. this one feeds into like my fears of airports (laughs) But it also feeds into my fear of airports, mainly, like, I don't like flying when there's, like, clouds about or storms or anything like that. I just want a pitch clear blue sky, and that's about it. Mm. And it just feels like everything goes wrong at the airport, I'm just saying. Exactly. Mm. I just, I get anxiety when I get the bill at the uh, the bar Mm. at the airport. (laughs) Yeah, why does everything cost five times as much at the airport? Like, get fucked. No joke. I guess, I don't know. I think I remember, I might might have told this story once on one of the shows in the past, but I remember being at the airport once and getting an orange juice that cost six bucks. Yeah, sounds about right. And I'm like, this better be the best best damn tasting orange juice I ever tasted in my life. Oh, wait, that, that magazine, that old lady had had Lethal Weapon on it. She's also got a nope. taser, which you're not bringing on a fucking plane these days. It's the crossover of Christmas films, Die Hard and Lethal Weapon. It just, like, opens it up, like, I know. on the airplane. Like, no one's going to hear that? <laughs> like, was this... Could you really just do whatever you wanted on a plane back back then? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, you could. You can bring uh, tasers, machine guns, and that dude's yeah. hair back there. <laughs> that dude's hair. <laughs> You could bring nail clippers on an airplane yeah. back in the day. Crazy. You didn't have to take your <laughs> shoes off. Right? Mm. Meanwhile, at this little chapel out in the snowy conundrum. <laughs> so, was this movie kind of like William Sadler's break? Or was he was... kind of more known before this? Because I'm trying to remember, but I can't. Uh, well, I was thinking, yeah. like, it, this would have to have been one of his, like, first big mm. roles. I'm going to find out what he was doing before this one. Because then, you know, he'd be in, like, um, Shawshank Redemption and stuff. Oh, well, he only did a few movies prior to this one. Like, prior to this, like, his, he was in uh, Project X, K-9, and Hard to Kill. And then okay. this film. He was in K-9? Yeah. He had, uh, from the looks of it, it must have been a small role, because it just says Don, car, car salesman. And that's yeah. about it. So I guess they kind of went with what they did with Die Hard was get someone who wasn't that well known in film Hmm. as the villain because Die Hard was Alan Rickman's, what, film debut because he was a theatre actor. Hmm. So they kind of went with that. But I guess for With a Vengeance, which I also love, and I've probably seen that the most out of all of them maybe, Jeremy Irons was a bit more well known. Yeah. 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 But it did give us more Samuel L. Jackson. Die Hard with a Vengeance and the original Die Hard is like my favorite. Oh, I I can't, it's hard to decide. Yeah, I just kind of like all three and I don't really consider this movie having any other sequels. I mean, these movies. (laughs) 